Here we go. Let's get to these uh, to these phone calls, shall we? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Got to get this configured on the screen over here and put that over there and click over here and put that up there and then click that right there and then we're ready to go to Jake, our first caller of the night. How are you tonight? Good. How about you, Rick? I'm just fine. Thanks. First time being a caller on the show, actually. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows me in the comments. You know, the Little Mouse is the South. So I thought for tonight, I thought I'd make my first call in. Well, that's great. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Um, so for the protest, it was actually a really great day in Windsor. A big turn up compared to what we've mm -hmm. seen in protests in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And um... lots of peacefully, you know, we had, you know, a couple problems, but mostly it was peaceful. The counter-protesters were trying to antagonize us, but we weren't having it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and, seemed uh, to be the theme across the we, country, really. Mm -hmm. And Leo, I guess, was saying, I wasn't there right on time, but I ended up getting there later still. But I guess Leo was saying there was some guy in a building egging people, and I guess he ran up there, and I guess the guy took off. It's just amazing how today turned out on the good side. I think it's amazing, too. It, it truly is. And that, you know, this is going to make Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh look absolutely more like fool, uh, fools. And that this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, you know, trying to be biased or anything, but this could turn for pure polyev because, you know, Justin Trudeau was using Muslims or everything to gain voter support. And now that he's turning on them, you know, this, it'll be, the, it could crash them. I agree. And I hope it does. I agree. Yeah, I think you're right on target there. Yeah, definitely. I've been watching all over. I've been putting footage up. It, it's just been amazing. You know, I think, like you said, I think we're well over the million mark. Could be. I have no idea. There's just uh, too many cities, too many people. Can't count them all. So um, I think that they caught... Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh flat-footed. I think the, the the public in general, I think, is surprised. Uh, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting anywhere near this kind of turnout, especially on a Wednesday. And even the left, they're saying, oh, we're racist and all. Like the usual words that we hear from the left. And it's like, you know, I even said in a speech today there, I yeah. said, we're all one. You know, it doesn't matter about race, color, religion. We're all in one. We agree with the one message, you yeah. know, leave our kids alone. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, and, you it, know, it was truly I amazing. Think, and I think this is just the start. You know, there isn't going to be an end until this ends. Well, you know, I thought it was also a victory for free speech today because uh, the, the left, through these unions, they were trying to organize counter protests that really had a single objective and that was to shut this thing down demoralize people so they wouldn't come out and and uh, and prevent people from expressing themselves through public protest but so many people came out that uh you know it was a victory for free speech that way this it was a, a it struck a blow against cancel culture in in my view 100 percent, you know and that was the main goal, you know, whether what side you're on, you know, even though I don't agree with the other side, you know, it was more important to hear both sides without being just cut off. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's, and, you right. know, and it, it's just so amazing just to be with the crowd, you know, it was a positive energy and I haven't felt that in a long time, you know, it's been three years. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, when I, to school you know and i mean it was recent that i graduated maybe five years or so but this wasn't happening in schools when i went there sure there was little things but you know everybody was able to fit into one circle compared to now where everybody's being divided yeah yeah that's something that i kind of took note of when i was out at the event here in my town i uh 
you know, I, I, I said it, it really has kind of united people, but not in the same way that you get this unity on the, uh, you know, on the left neoliberal side. Over there, it's all identity politics where they put people into like groups, you know, but over uh, over here, I think the people united behind a cause, but still retained their individual identities regardless it wasn't just i don't think that the people were put into these little categories of victimhood in the same way so i think it was a very positive thing that way exactly and you know and i've seen many messages over on like x and stuff like saying you know people like if they are gay or transgender and all that you know they're still with the protest yeah. and that's what i hate that the left tries to turn on us yeah 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 in fact we had a caller in earlier in the day who uh, who talked about exactly that you know her her daughter transgender adult now but explained why both of them were kind of supportive of today's event so we did see quite a bit of that actually and then in my town too we saw the counter protesters actually saying you know i love you to the to the to the people who are marching and then the marchers saying it back to, to the other side. So and see, that surprised me. For us, actually, I, absolutely. And for us, you know, they just tried to mock us with our own message. And, you know, we were just laughing. Like, you're trying to trigger us and you're just motivating us more just to put our word out there. You're not yeah. hurting us. Now, I know there were some incidents but I think really they were sort of few and far between and they're starting to flow in now in video clips. But it's important, I think, as a media guy, um, I think it's important to realize that as these clips of, of individual incidents kind of come in, they're condensed. So you get this condensed view of things. So it looks worse than it really is because you'll get like a string of of incidents that you can watch in in series right but in reality they were like there was one in this city and one way over there and one in the morning over there and one in the afternoon way over there and so it makes up like a very very small teeny tiny small percentage of the, the entire event itself you know what i'm saying it's like you you focus on it because it's yeah. right in front of you but it really wasn't that much and that's all the mainstream media paints it is all it's all the bad you know it's like paint the good you know like stop listening to bill c11 and bill c18 you know just do what you were meant to do you know don't be biased but you know when yeah. you're paid money money talks yeah yep that's right and uh and you can see that in the mainstream media coverage today i did i don't usually watch but i did look at ctv and cbc i shouldn't say i don't normally watch i do watch but i rarely ever look at cbc i looked at them today and it was all negative like even as they and you know yeah and you know you as a former reporter from there you know you know you like to watch that to catch the things you know sometimes it's not obvious for all people but you know mm -hmm. yeah I, uh, I i do it's like when i first went to journalism school um, the professors there said, you know, now that you're learning how to learning the craft, you will never watch television or listen to the radio the same again. And it's true. I, I never have since then because you're sort of involved in the process now of creating it. So you begin to understand that the medium really is the message and you, you start to look for these sorts of things and understand not only why stories are chosen, but why things aren't chosen, why stories are covered in particular ways. And that's exactly what I'm talking about here, too. It's about perspective and context, and it's important. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't, I haven't watched mainstream media for a long time, and I never will. I don't even watch cable anymore. It's like I pay attention to your show and maybe other channels that are still growing out there, but I will never touch the mainstream media. Yeah. Ever. Well, I never tell people not to watch stuff. I, I think, you know, people should be free to watch Maybe whatever they want, more. you know, but and, and I don't think it hurts to dip in once in a while to see what 
you know, what they're saying over there, because if you don't, if you don't pay attention, then you, you sort of block out perspective too, even if it's stuff you don't agree with, or even if you know they're lying, it's, it, I think it's still useful to know what they're up to. Right. Um, so you can, or even kind of, yeah. like local. Yeah. Well, Just there was to see what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Like there was a local reporter from the newspaper here. I've known him for years. He was out covering it today. I hadn't seen him in quite a while. And he's actually, he's a good guy. I, I trust him. It doesn't, it's not like every mainstream media reporter out there is, is an evil, uh, sinister person. Right. Uh, I trust, I trust him. Right. I trust that guy. But yeah, I'd also know that especially at the network level, they do engage in, practices that are less than truthful sometimes because they're spin they're spinning the government narrative they certainly are right and it's you know it's not always the reporter too because you know like the freedom convoy and recently you know we've met with me and leo have met with media and they're just so nice you know it's not yeah. always just the reporter right that's right yeah they have editors back in uh in the office who make editorial decisions that they really have no control over and that that often is like you're going to cover that story but not that story so it, it slants right. the coverage you know it really does and then they you get back and they do uh, sometimes edit your scripts or edit your video because they have they have ultimate control in the end not just the reporter right and hopefully once we can hopefully finally get rid of justin trudeau hopefully we can find some sense of normalcy and to change that to bring it to where it once was yeah yeah hoping well that would involve getting a lot of that government money out of the uh out, out of the mainstream media system yeah to, to take that and influence out of there pack their bags. <laughs> difficult times though because the toronto star they've laid off a you know a whole bunch of additional reporters and they are no longer going to be offering their print edition and I, I like I went to the variety store the other day, two days ago and I a few days ago, just before they canceled the print edition, not knowing they were going to do that. I bought one. I didn't know how much it would cost. You know how much it cost me? Over four dollars for a newspaper. What? Yeah. For the Toronto. That's Star, ridiculous. I thought so, too. I just about had a heart attack. And, you know, I have like elderly like grandparents that, you know, they they couldn't believe when it's like, oh, we're switching over to digital and they're starting to have to learn all these tablets and stuff. It's like, wow, it's like they missed the paper the way that it used to be. Yeah, yeah. But overall... You can wake up, have a coffee. Oh my goodness, yeah. But, you know, overall today, beautiful weather. It was uh, around here anyway. It was a gorgeous day, a perfect day for a march. It absolutely was. You know, I thought it was going to be really cold, but actually it turned out just in the middle yeah yeah and i got i went out there after leo leo left and i went there and i'm like he's like oh maybe the show's over i'm like i'll find it and i found the show it was actually pretty nice you know it was like the freedom convoy food you know yeah. entertainment it was great yeah well listen sir we're gonna move on because that because i have them stacked up here tonight not surprising thank no you very, thank, thank you, you so, so much for calling in it was great good conversation I'll absolutely be calling in the future. Thank you so much, Rick. Look forward to that. Thanks. Okay, here's, I think it's Julio. Julio! <laughs> that was that was little mouth of the salt. Now you got the big mouth of the salt. That Jacob, he's a good kid, I'll tell you. Yeah, that was he, a great uh, call. He apprentices for me at my shop, Rick. Oh. He, he's my apprentice at my shop. And he came to my shop, and he says, I'm not the smartest guy to... I don't nice to listen. I don't want to hear that shit. I need to teach you everything you need to know. He's been there for almost three years. He's making money. So, Jacob, if you're still listening, donate some of that money to Rick's show. It don't take much. But as a group, if we all contribute, it all adds up. Okay, and you can keep these phone lines running. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Now, back to the yeah. back to the topic. It's funny. I, I, I turned on Global global news because that's all i have is global news okay and social media and what they had to say was in ottawa maybe a thousand people showed up what? I'm, I'm just shaking my head going <laughs> i swear to god rick i'm just i'm shaking my head going are you gonna be joking me really 
How can you uh, hide? How can you hide the numbers? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Only a thousand. It's ridiculous, okay? And they're trying to pull the same shit again. Trudeau sent out a tweet, okay? Uh, if you look at Trudeau's tweet, he's calling everybody that was down there homophobic, okay? Uh, and uh, we're hatred. <laughs> so, yeah. And what I thought was funny, somebody messaged me. I don't know. Maybe you would know and some of the viewers would know. But did Jagmeet Singh have, uh, what's that thing? We're going to call it the vid. Does he have the vid? Somebody said he has the vid and he should be staying home for 14 days. I, but he's out there mixing and mingling. I didn't hear that. That's Well, that's something to look into because if he does, okay, we got a big shit storm happening. Yeah, let me just look. Right, so. Yeah, somebody said they sent me a message. So I don't know if it's true or not. That's why I'm asking you. Maybe you know. Um, I'm just, I just typed in Jagmeet Singh COVID and nope, I'm not seeing anything come back. That's current. Nope. No. Okay. So then it's false information. Uh, on the other hand, okay. Uh, I could see myself and, you know, it was very well organized today. They did draw a permit. That's why it didn't go down to city hall. They had their run to the school board and then back to the riverfront. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. but I'm on. I'm not on the fence. I'm doing it. We got a couple more protests to go, but I'm going to draw a permit, okay, to for a protest to protest inflation in the housing crisis, in the homelessness, mm. and roll it all into one big ball of wax. Now, what names are you going to call us after this one, Justin Trudeau? <laughs> Those I, are real issues, okay. Yeah. Very, very serious issues, and people are, are losing. They're losing everything. You know, when you can't afford to to eat, you can't afford the heat, you can't afford the roof over your house. This is Canada, twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah, it, it's true. People, no. people, every a lot of things are just out of reach for people now. Yeah. It is, it, and that's a big issue, right? And 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 a protest like that could probably draw ten million people out of their doors. Yeah, on a weekend. Yeah. Right, because it affects it affects probably. It, this is no word of a lie to the people listening right now in Canada. It's affecting more than half of the Canadians. I'm not going to go with two thirds. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with a half. Okay, yeah. that it's affecting, yep. and it's not good. It's scary times for a lot of people, buddy. Yep, it is. That's what happens when you have a government that uh, just. When it's reckless with the economy, reckless with the dollar, reckless with spending, reckless with taxes, just you know, well, no restraint. I, I went and got I went I went and got my dry cleaning done today because I got a wedding coming up on the weekend, right? And uh, and the dry cleaner there, she's telling me about how she uh, rents an apartment, but she's been there for years, and you can only push the rent up five percent, whatever. But a unit next door went up for rent, and it, he doubled the rent. <laughs> As soon as they moved out, you doubled up the rent for the next person, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and you have the liberals crying, saying, oh, well, we're going to fix this housing crisis, but it's going to take us three years. The liberals won't be here in three years. Yeah. So it's all it's lip service and a bunch of bullshit, right? So, you know, the sooner you put pressure on the government, and you could do it. You know what I mean? Like I said, if 10 million people got out on a weekend to protest about what's really going on, Okay, financially in Canada, you know, you could push this turd right out the door. Well, this protest today, this this hurts Trudeau for sure. A lot. Oh yeah. yeah, and also also his his uh, his doings in India. Now India is a trade partner. We're losing. We're going to lose billions, folks. <laughs> Lots of billions without trading with India. And it's starting to stifle to the U.S. in their trade. I, I, I seen on the news today that yeah. the Americans, okay, uh, <laughs> you know, that's something, okay, that should have been kept secret. That's confidential when you have agents. And don't every country does it. Okay, don't don't kid yourself. Every country goes out and assassinates somebody in another country. That's been going on for for a hundred years. Yeah, well, okay, the, the Americans do it. The Russians yeah. do it. The Canadians do it. East India, China does it. Everybody does it. Yeah, you got a dissident that you want gone. 
they send their special agents to do it. Mm-hmm. So that should have been cop- kept top secret. And he went out blabbing his mouth. If it did happen. Yeah, I'm not right. sure what the motivation is there. I don't know. They shunned him. That yeah. was the motivation. You think that was it? And now he's trying to cock he's trying to cock block him at the end of the day, right? And mm. I don't know. I don't know. The sooner we get this punk out, the better off we are and do it peacefully. Mm. Like today, mm-hmm. just keep applying pressure. Yeah. Right? And and try and keep it as nonviolent as possible. You know, I had a buddy up at my girl today, and, you know, I apologize uh, for the F-bombs that I had to throw, but, you know, some people are either uh, flight or fight, and I'm all about fight at the end of the day. I'm not flight nowhere. Yep, yeah. Okay, and the fights, you want to get in my face and in my girl like that, well, we go to a back alley and uh, have some consensual uh this fighting going on that's still legal in this country by oh, the way he, and that's not common law well he got right into your personal space like he just was right up in your face that guy right and we're in the middle and we're almost in the middle of another what are those things called scamdemics mm-hmm. yeah right so. i should have cracked him for that one right and uh you know luckily he you know some people are just born stupid they are they should get the information on somebody before they try and punk them off because I'm no punk, right? I'm mean, just I'm not. Yeah, you know, well, his, yeah I did. Today, I did notice his, ex- his expression changed a little bit when you told him you were the Golden Gloves champ. <laughs> he, I did notice it, it could have ended really bad for him. Yeah, Rick, it could have really ended bad for him because I got my blood boils right once I, I hit that boiling point, and it, only certain things can make me make my blood boil. And it, one of them's not money. Believe it or not, it's not money. One of them's messing with my kids, and the other one's messing with my wife, and then messing with me. I'm the third one on that one. Money's not even in the equation to make my blood boil. Yeah. You can rip me off for a hundred grand. I'm not going to come and kill you. You mess with my kids or my wife, then we got a different story, right? So, it is what it is. I'm just glad everything. Ended peacefully, and I learned a lot from this protest. I did. I learned a lot from this. More. I learned more from this protest than I think I did from the freedom protest. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it, it was well well worth the experience, especially for young folks like Jake. Jake's only 20, 21, 22 years old. He's young, 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 young lad, right? So, and for all the youngsters out there, they, it, it was a learning experience, and it was a good learning experience. And just keep applying pressure the right way. Yeah, yeah. And in, we'll, in the House of Cards will fall. And we'll see where things go for the rest of the week, because I think I think that First Nations protest is still ongoing this week, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. But, where's, uh, I don't see the First Nation protest happening in Windsor. No, this was just this is just on Parliament Hill, and it is actually about Bill C-53. And so it was happening at the same time. They, and, but they've been trying to keep it separated a bit. Um, and there are some linkages fr- sort of to the convoy thing, but they've separated it out now. And there's a lot of backstory to that. But uh, they, they were up there today. We carried uh, part of the speeches during our live stream here today. And I think that that's ongoing because that all has to do with a land, you know, sort of a land claim, and, but mostly it's about shifting of or granting of rights to Métis uh, communities. So that that's a complicated issue. Yeah, and I heard the dog men are coming. So if you're going to Ottawa, bring some dog food. They're hungry. They yeah. got to eat too. And I like my pets. Spay and neuter your pets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, Vancouver. By the way, uh, I did see a nice video uh, today. The Antifa were there in Vancouver, dressed in black with the mask. Did you catch that one, Rick? No, I didn't see that. But yeah, they're pretty active out yeah, there. Yeah, I'll have to send you that video. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they're dressed in full black masks, the whole nine yards, man. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, wow. And and the police would rather go hit up the uh, the peaceful protesters and these clowns that been destroying everything for the last 10 years sad yeah sad 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 but with that being said rick thanks for taking the call thank you leo i appreciate everything you did today have a good day
take care. Okay. And Thank you. who do we have up 